In this problem that we're working on, we're coming back to the age depth relationship. So we just have that uh, A is equal to the slope times the independent variable D, the depth, plus the, uh, plus the intercept. And in this particular problem, we're trying to figure out what the intercept is. So we're really just, we can extrapolate this, um, extrapolate this line over to the y-axis and the depth then is basically where this line intersects the y-axis when the independent variable the depth is equal to zero at zero uh, the depth defined is zero so the equation that we're working with, we have a is equal to k d plus a zero. Uh, our knowns, what do we know in this in this problem that we're working with? Well, we have two data points over here. We have these two data points. We have a relatively shallow depth at 20 centimeters with an age of 1,500 years, and then we have a second data point. At a depth of 400 centimeters and an age of 10,000 years. So, our knowns consist of two points. We have an x and y, or a d1 and an a1, and we have a, another point, we have a d2 and an a2. Okay. What are our, are our unknowns in this case? Are the slope and what we're supposed to find in this case is the intercept. Now, you know, common sense tells us that the intercept should be somewhere around, uh, well, these. This is kind of an odd number of subdivisions, about um, um, 1,250 years, but somewhere around a thousand, somewhere around a thousand years. So, take you know, make make good use of your graph, and if you come up with a number that isn't is way off of that, then you know you've done something wrong. But working with our knowns, uh, where where can we go from where can we go from there? we can figure out what the slope is, right? The slope is just a delta y, a dependent variable, change in the dependent variable over change at the independent variable. And in this case, this is going to be a change in the age of the rock over a change in the depth. And we have two data points, so that's easy for us to calculate. We take the uh, second A minus the first and divide that by the second depth uh, minus the first. And that gives us our, gives us our slope. And once we figure out what the slope is, we come back to our equation, we have um, a is equal to k d plus a zero. We now really have only one unknown. So let's solve for it. Let's write down a zero. We'll subtract kd from both sides of the equation. So this gives us an a minus kd. And um, in order to figure out what a zero is, then we could take either one of those two data points. And let's take the take the first one. We have an a one minus k times the second one. And so that is basically our, our answer. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Hopefully, hopefully no problems with, with that. Now on the second problem, the parent function here is element concentration times the initial concentration times the liquid fraction raised to the d minus 1 power. And d is, a, is referred to as a distribution coefficient. So, however, this 
equation is in a linear linear form and our two variables here are not c and c and f but they're the log of c and the log of f so again i'm Assuming that you're getting pretty confident about writing this down, this is, we know we should be able to write the log of C is equal to the log of um, C0 plus, and we bring down the power, C minus 1, times the log of the liquid fraction. Now let's write down the equation of a straight line, it's in a little bit different form. We have the dependent variable is equal to, in this case, this is the intercept. So this is the B plus the slope times X. So our Y is equal to the log of C. The intercept is equal to the log of C0. The slope is equal to d minus 1. And our independent variable x is equal to the logarithm of the liquid fraction. Now what is the intercept? By definition, the intercept is the value of the dependent variable at a point where the independent variable, in this case our log of f, is equal to zero, this would be our intercept. Okay, everybody fairly sure about that? This is our this is our intercept over here. Now, this is 3 on the log scale. This is 2 on the log scale. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4 subdivisions. So this is about 2.25. That makes this point located at about 2.2. So our intercept, remember our our intercept here is the log of C0. So our intercept is equal to the log of C0 is approximately equal to 2.2. .2. What we'd like to do, though, is figure out what C0 is. And C0, then, would be equal to, equal to what? Well, we know, that the, we know that the log of C0, log of C0 is the power that you raise the base 10 to in order to get C0. So we know that. We should be able to take 10 to the log of C0, and this should be equal to 2C0. And so C0 would be equal to 10 to the 2.2 power. So we now, we now have our C0. We also know what the intercept is. Uh, we can you know, read the intercept directly off the graph. Uh, the intercept in this case is, you know, you're used to seeing it on the left side, so that may throw you off, but it's basically at a point on the log C axis, where, or log F axis, where uh, log of F is equal to zero. What, what does 
you know, if, if, if the log of f is equal to equal to zero, um, this implies that um, f is equal to one. Why? Because this is the power that we raise the base 10 to, write 10 down there. This is the power that we raise the base 10 to in order to get f. So 10 to the 0 is equal to 1. That's a 100% liquid fraction. Now we might also want to know what the distribution coefficient is. And the distribution coefficient, d minus 1, is the slope of this line. So if we wanted to calculate the slope, this number up here, we could pick a basically a delta. In this case, our y is log c over a delta log f. OK? Well, if, to make things easy, let's pick points on the graph that are easy to, easy to work with. We could work with this point. at zero and then we could come over here to minus one and work with this point we'd have to read the read that value off the chart but that makes it easy because our delta log f is going to be minus one and we just need to figure out what that delta log of c is. And this is going to be equal to the distribution coefficient minus 1. So, so d then would be equal to that delta log c. You have to figure that out over minus 1, at least using the points that I've noted on the graph, and then subtract, or rather add 1, uh, to this result in order to get your uh, distribution factor. Okay. If there are any questions, 